Hey, I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, a U.S. Navy trained psychiatrist and the founder of the Sharper Every Day program, where we use cutting edge neurotechnology to help you stay sharp, focused, and mentally resilient. Today, I'm going to show you something that the public has actually never seen before, and it comes from over 1 million brain training sessions using the Muse headband and processed through a platform called MindLift. There's a brain biomarker called Peak Alpha that recently became available on the Muse and MindLift apps, and maybe one of the most important metrics we have right now for tracking cognitive performance over time. Peak Alpha is the frequency at which your specific alpha brainwaves are strongest, and it correlates with your alertness, working memory, and mental sharpness. But here's what's exciting. Until now, we've never had large-scale population data to see how Peak Alpha actually changes as we age age and between genders. And that's exactly what we'll be looking at today. Now, I should note that the data that I'm going to show you today was collected by MindLift, which is a separate company from Interaxon, which actually creates the Muse headband. MindLift is a platform for mental health providers to design custom neurofeedback protocols for their clients. So this population data is not officially endorsed by Interaxon, the makers of the Muse headband yet, but it is coming from MindLift, which uses the Muse headband in their setup and research. That being said, thanks to over a million sessions analyzed by the MindLift team, we now have this extremely interesting data set. I'll be sure to provide a link to this beautiful website made by MindLift in the description of this video if you want to check it out yourself. As we scroll down, we see a very nice explanation of what peak alpha is. You can see that when peak alpha is measured, people will have a data point measured in hertz between 8 hertz and 12 hertz. That simply is where the alpha brainwave frequency is highest in a specific brain. And since alpha is defined as being between 8 hertz and 12 hertz, that's why we get this number. According to recent neuroscience, the higher that score is, the more likely it is that your brain is performing at its best. Theoretically, you can have scores as high as 12 hertz. I myself have ranged in the last six months between 9.3 hertz and 11.2 hertz. I personally have seen some of my clients measure as high as 11.8 hertz and as low as 8.6 hertz. Now looking at the population data, we see that if you average everyone out at each particular age point, the measurements tend to range from about 9.65 hertz to 9.82 hertz. That's what we're calling average. According to the data, we see that we actually start out with a lower peak alpha measurement in childhood that then peaks in middle age, then declines steadily into our later years. This is why researchers are advocating that we find ways to prevent a sharp decline in our peak alpha levels, which may provide a way to protect ourselves from increased risk of dementia. Now there's definitely some data here that has never been before talked about. In particular, in this data set, males are reaching their maximum peak alpha levels earlier than women. Men are reaching their maximum peak alpha levels at around 33 years old, as opposed to women, which are getting their max peak alpha at around 36 years old. Also, on average, males tend to peak out around 9.78 hertz, whereas women are peaking out a little bit higher at 9.82 hertz. In general, we see a relatively rapid decline for both genders between 40 and 50 years old, and then we see an even sharper decline in peak alpha levels for both genders as they get over 55, but it looks like males drop even quicker than females. So what does all this mean for you? Well, if you have the Muse headband, you can measure your peak alpha levels in the regular Muse app. Then you can take a look at this graph and see generally, are you above or below average for your peak alpha levels according to your age. Now, if you're below average, don't freak out. These scores vary quite a bit. I've seen that in myself and in my clients. The good news is that if you're below average, there's a bunch that you can do to improve your scores. I talk about it all the time on this channel and go over it in detail in my training programs. 
Now, I imagine that there is a bell curve distribution of scores with the top 10% being a lot more rare than the middle 50% for peak alpha levels, but we haven't gotten that information as far as a data distribution yet. I'll have to ask MindLift to create a bell curve and see if they're willing to do that, but I still think that even at this level, this data proves out to be a very useful biomarker and is already bringing the wearable neurotechnology niche into the longevity movement as more and more people are interested in getting data on their minds and their bodies through wearable devices to get benchmarks on how their brain and bodies are functioning so that they can increase performance or at least prevent any further decline as we get older. If we can use metrics like peak alpha to educate people on how their brain is functioning, I think that it is very possible to slow the decline of any of these metrics and as a result, prevent worsening mental resilience and protect ourselves from the development of dementia over time. Now, as far as personal anecdotes go on what I've seen in my peak alpha levels, I tend to see my worst peak alpha levels after either time zone changes with international travel or when I'm sick with a head cold. The highest peak alpha levels are when I'm well rested, I'm exercising, I'm meditating, and that's what I tend to see in my clients as well. And I have to tell you, some of the worst peak alpha metrics that I've seen in my clients so far come from shift workers. So either healthcare workers or people that work in the airline industry like pilots, because their sleep and their circadian rhythms are so disrupted, they really have long lasting damage to their peak alpha levels. And it's so unfortunate that we see these differences in people who work so hard and they're really paying the price for doing shift work. But I hope this might be the beginning of conversations on how we can shape society to optimize people's brain health and find solutions for people that have to undergo shift work so that they're not undergoing so many long term effects on their brain over time. Now, on a positive note, there's a lot of different things you can do to improve your brain health and your peak alpha levels. If you want to learn specifically how to optimize your peak alpha levels, be sure to take a look at my Sharper Every Day five-day challenge, which we run at the start of every month. I've had a couple of groups go through so far, and we've had a blast. Now, there are some other things that I wanted to cover in this MindLift research. The data set had some really interesting findings from a neuroscience perspective. As you may recall, there's a wide range of brainwave frequencies with delta and theta on the bottom of this graph with the slowest frequencies, alpha in the middle, and beta and gamma being the fastest brainwave frequencies. Now, what the MindLift data is showing in their clients is that delta and theta brainwave amplitudes are decreasing with age, whereas the alpha and beta amplitudes increase. Now, most people think that the brain just slows down into delta and theta with age. You can just imagine someone's brain slowing down and that resulting in slower brainwave frequencies, but we're seeing that this is more of a nuanced shift. And this MindLift report hints at what might be happening here is that instead of just a pure slowing of the brain, there's a rebalancing going on where lower frequency brain waves like delta and theta are fading and the faster brain waves like beta have to rise possibly to compensate for the loss of those slower brainwave frequencies. Another possibility is that while the absolute power of delta and theta is decreasing, the relative ratios to alpha and beta might still remain high in older individuals with cognitive decline. So it might not just be about raw power and amplitude, it might be how these brain waves are interacting with each other within this complex system. And there is a third possibility that because this data set came from MindLift users, they might be a unique population of people that are actively training their cognition, so it might not necessarily reflect what's going on in the general population. In my opinion, I think that it probably reflects pretty closely to what we'd see in the general population, and is certainly one of the most robust data sets that's ever been presented. If you yourself are a neuroscientist or a neurofeedback practitioner, I'd be really curious to hear your feedback on this data set, so be sure to leave a comment below if you have any any opinions on this. I think the take home point is that neuroscience now is being democratized through home wearables and this level of data collection and reporting has never been available before. Much more work needs to be done, but now everyday users, people like you and me, can access these real time biomarkers to assess our brains and train our brains through feedback systems like you find in the Muse or MindLift. And whether you're 25 years old or 90 years old, this data shows you how your brain is performing, it's measurable and trainable, and it's a really exciting time. 
Be sure to subscribe because in future episodes, I'll be doing a full breakdown of what my own peak alpha trends look like over the course of several months. I've already made videos about my initial impressions and a deeper dive on peak alpha levels using the Muse headband. So if you're curious about that, click this video here and I'll see you on the other side.